Nathan Oppen, I'm the dental solution engineer at Formlabs at the Berlin office and in this video I'm going to show you how to design solid models with removable dies in ExoCAD model creator for the Form 3B. In order to be able to follow along with this tutorial you need our presets installed in your ExoCAD installation. You can find the link and the instructions on how to install these presets on our application guide on our website. These presets are known to work with ExoCAD versions Valletta, Materia and Plavdiv. And if you are following the instructions in this video tutorial, this is how your model is going to look like. And now we are going to jump into the order setup. So we are going into Dental DB and we are setting up an order. That's already done here. You don't need to set up any material or preset for the model creator module because this will be handled by the module itself later. So when we have set up the order, we only click on model creator to launch the model creator. Model creator is already running. And I'm going to click on load scan data only because we're going through the whole design process. If you have a scanner configured with your ExoCAD installation, these models will be automatically loaded by ExoCAD. In this case, on my laptop, I have no scanner configured, so I have to tell ExoCAD where the models are. So I'm navigating to the folder with the models and selecting what ExoCAD is asking me. It is asking for the upper jaw. So I select the upper jaw and click on open. In the next step it is asking for the antagonist. I open this also. And now we are ready to design our models. First step would be to choose the right preset. In the wizard under model type you have a little drop down menu. And if you open it you can choose our presets if they are installed on your system. We are going to choose Form 3B model minus 10. So now we are in the alignment step. And as you can see the imported scans are facing the wrong direction. This can be easily fixed by doing a control click on the model and dragging along the Z axis. And you have some information in this little window here about the height of the um, models in total and of each of the jaws. I like to have the upper jaw about 2 millimeters bigger than the lower jaw because of the overbite of the teeth. So in order to achieve this, I'm just dragging them a little bit down. And now we have about two millimeters difference between lower and upper jaw. One other thing to keep in mind is that we are going to do a model with removable dies. So there will be dies in the socket in the model and we want them to be as perpendicular to the model base as possible. So if we're looking at this anterior region and thinking about this die, for example, we see that if we had a perpendicular die body here, it will intersect with the gingiva. This will lead to a minimum wall thickness of the die socket and we will um, later have problems with the fit of the dies. One quick fix for this situation could be to just again do a control click on both models and angle them a little bit. So now we have more room here. Then we check again from the front view and if we are happy we can click on next. In this next step we can clean up our scan files and we can remove unwanted, unwanted parts of the files. This can be done by left clicking and dragging and I'm removing even more of the soft tissue in, in the anterior region for the exact same reason that I don't want to be forced to angle the dice. I'm doing the same here. 
In this case, I'm using the select through mode. And if we're doing so, we have to double check that we are not accidentally selected anything we wanted to keep. That's not the case. So we can click on delete to get rid of the selection. We click on next. And now ExoCard is proposing to remove the intersections between both models. These intersections are quite minimal, so I'm okay with removing them. But you also could keep them and do this adjustment manually in the articulator later. I'm going to choose automatic um, adjustment. And by the way, they will be removed on the upper jaw by default. So as we didn't uh, design any restoration yet, we have to tell ExoCard where the margin line is. The margin line we are defining here will later be used in the design process. In the de design process you can also still modify the margin line, but keep in mind if you do so that the margin line of your restorations and the margin line of the model dies will not match. I'm using the automatic detection for the margin line. All I have to do in this case is to click on the margin and ExoCut will try to find the margin. We have a pretty good scan here, so this is working well. If you have a lower quality scan, you will have way more problems. If you're not sure about the automatic de detection, you still can uh, modify the detected margin line. So we can click and drag around single points. You can remove points by left clicking, hold and right clicking. And you can add points by just clicking on the line. If you are happy, you click on next to proceed to the next tools. So same procedure here. We are checking the detected margin and if we are happy we are clicking on next. And again checking. And we are done with the margin detection. So in this next step, ExoCut asks us if we wanted only to have the restoration dice to be removable or if we wanted to have more teeth removable. We are going to select also the adjacent teeth here. And click on next. So as we don't have a margin line for the adjacent teeth also. We have to tell ExoCut where they are. This is as easy as clicking on the occlusal surface. So then ExoCut is presenting what it is proposing as a margin line. And we sometimes have to do some manual adjustments. So if we're happy, we click on apply because we did changes here. And then move on to the next tools. So at this step, we have to define the insertion axis of the dies. And as we said, we want to have them as perpendicular as possible to the model base for the best fit. So by default they are all perpendicular to the model base, which can be seen if we go to the side view. 
So we're going to try to keep this insertion axis and we do not ch need to change anything on the settings because this is the preset we already imported at the start of the design process. All we need to do is click on run. So now that we have our model, we inspect it and we can see that everything looks right except this part here. So what is happening here? We are going to use the section view to see a little bit what is happening. We want this wall for the die socket to be at least 0.5 millimeter. That's not the case in this region. So this is way too low for the wall thickness of this socket. So we will be um, forced to incline to angle this insertion axis for this tooth to get rid of this phenomenon. So we just click on the insertion axis arrow and then we check from the side because we don't want, want to have an angle difference that is bigger than 10 to 15 degrees because this is going to affect um, the die fit too much. So we're checking from the front also. It looks nice and we click on run again to check if this time we're going to have a better result. It looks much better now. And we check again if the wall thickness is okay. That's okay. So by just angling, angulating one die, um, we have solved the problem. So we click on next. And now we're designing the lower jaw. We again do not need to change anything on the settings here because this is the preset. And here we are with the lower jaw model. There's a small issue. So we won't, don't want to have sharp edges on our models because we're going to print them directly on the build platform for the best uh, accuracy. So in order to get rid of this sharp edge here, we can just increase the pedestal height, this value here and rerun. And now we have, we got rid of the sharp edge. And now we got rid of the sharp edge here. So in this next step, we can add or remove attachments to our models, which could, uh, for example, be articulator interfaces or text. But we also can add a couple of other objects. So if we are clicking on this little drop down menu here, we see a Formlabs ventilation hold, which I'm, go I'm going to show you how to use it to add um, fit check holes into the die sock sockets. I'm clicking just on the model to place a cylinder there. And then I'm dragging it down so it's not actually going through the model base and it is aiming to the base of the model die. 
This cylinder will later be subtracted from the model. And we can also rotate by holding control. Or just left clicking to move the cylinders around. Once we are happy with the placement, we click on next and these objects will now be subtracted from the model. So that's it, that's our finished model. At this point, if I'm clicking next, the ExoCut Model Creator model will close and save the files into the scene folder. As I don't want to do any changes anymore, that's what I'm going to do. But if I wanted to do any modifications uh, into my model design, I would have to click on Export Mode. So in this case, the wizard will only close, but the Model Creator model will stay open. It is always asking if you wanted to save the scene file. We are not going to save the scene file because the folder is already very populated uh, with already saved scene files. So now we have our model designed and if you are on Valletta or Matera ExoCut version, next step would be to open the folder with your files by clicking on open in explorer and then select your models and drag them into preform to set up the print you could also just click and copy the path and use the file open menu inside preform if you are on Plovdiv, you will see a preform button on the actions menu if you have preform installed on, in, on your computer. If you click on it, it will open a window um, which allows you to choose which STLs you want to send. As we do not have any restorations in this folder because they are not already designed. We don't need to uncheck anything, but in the case you wanted to print the models and also have already restorations in the same scene folder, you will have to uncheck the restorations. And then it is as easy as clicking on proceed to printing. And you will see that Preform will launch and import all these models and dice. You will have to choose the right material with, with which you want to print. And the right resolution and just click apply. And there they are, uh, the models and the dice. And you have only a couple of uh, further steps to set up the print. But this setup will be covered in a separate video. So we're done with the model design in ExoCut Model Creator. Thank you.